Michelle, uh, welcome to the program. Really nice to see you. Thank you. Good morning, Rhonda. Tell me about your experience. What made you decide to start One Stop Grocery Supply and how did you obtain the capital for your business? Well, actually, I didn't start the business. I purchased the business. I worked for the company for over 10 years and uh, I left for a few years to pursue some other endeavors and be a more involved parent. And uh, out of the blue, I hadn't heard from the previous owner for a number of years. I got a phone call from him uh, stating that the business wasn't doing very well and he'd like to know if I was interested in coming back. And um, we talked, we negotiated, and as a condition for my return, he agreed to sell me the business when he retired. So it probably, since you had a unique situation there, was not so much of a challenge in terms of securing capital to start, but what about once you started to get into the business and you needed to purchase things? Did you feel that you faced any additional obstacles as an African-American woman? Things were going, around, uh, going very well until the pandemic hit. And that of course gave me a new set of challenges and I did have to um, apply for some capital. I don't think that I was at a disadvantage as an African-American woman. Um, my business is a high value business. My customers come to me because I provide high value to them. Uh, the items that I sell are not unique. I don't produce them, I don't manufacture them. So they come to me because of the value they get from my company. And um, being an African-American woman hasn't been a, an issue or part of the equation. So I'm so intrigued uh, when you were talking about how the pandemic impacted you. Let's dig into that a little bit more. And also you must have your finger on the pulse of these supply chain disruptions we're having. So um, talk to me about some of the difficulties over the last couple of years and where we are now with some of that. I've been in this industry for over 25 years and the last couple of years have been very, very challenging. Um, first of all, prices are fluctuating on a weekly basis. There were prices, uh, paper products where, um, the paper products uh, in particular, the prices stayed the same for years. Every now and then you'd have a nominal increase and now the prices change on a weekly basis. Uh, one of my largest suppliers, same thing, same price for about 15 years, Within the last two years, we've had several increases from them. What advice do you have, especially for anyone who is uh, perhaps a woman of color or any other minority group for trying to start a business, somebody who might not have um, the kind of connections that other business leaders do? The best advice I can give is to get your ducks in a row. Uh, some things are very obvious. Um, make sure your credit is, you know, have good credit. Uh, lower your debt, get your debt as low as possible, lower your personal expenses, save some money. Uh, those things, I think any business that you start, whether you're selling a service or product are you know, things you wanna keep in mind. The second thing uh, I think is really important to do is to get together a team. Before you begin working on the business, make sure you have a good accountant and a good attorney. Those people are essential as you uh, begin or grow a business. Michelle, it's been great speaking with you and learning about your journey. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rhonda. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. For more clips and episodes of NJ Business Beat, subscribe to the NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel.